got something a little different today. I'm filming in the backyard. A long time ago, Mike Treen sent me these nice cast bullets. Uh, Mike casts some really pretty bullets from what I can tell. The finish is nice, the edges are sharp. This card says the Lyman 3118 scrap with linotype and tin, unsized. So I'm assuming that this was range scrap that he sweetened up a little bit with a little bit of linotype and a little bit of tin. And the Lyman 3118, I looked in my old book here, it's a vintage Lyman handbook. The 3118, designed for the 3220 rifles or pistols, 30 caliber rifle users find this bullet fine for indoors at 25 yards or small game with two grains of bullseye. Got some notes uh, down here on the 3118. These old Lyman books are great, they have such great information. I took a look at these uh, bullets and I weighed a few and they come out to about 118 grains. And uh, the size is about 314. So I think when Mike sent these, he mentioned maybe I could shoot them as blinking bullets in the 300 blackout. I think that's a great idea. However, I think I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I think I'm gonna use these in one of my rifles. I have this 1891 Argentine engineer carbine and the bore is a little poor on it, the rifling's a little thin. I've shot it a bit with cast bullets and it didn't do too bad, but I think it can do better. So I think I might try Mike's cast bullets in it. The 314 should be pretty good. I ran 313s in this before, lubricized. Um, I don't have a 314 lubricized die. I do have a push through NOE 314 die, but I figured I'm gonna run Mike's bullets just the size that they are. We'll get them lubed up and uh, run them as is and see how it works in this old rifle. And I remembered the old C.E. Harris article about cast bullet loads for military rifles and he breaks down four categories of loads for military rifles. Uh, first is a small game gallery load, the second being a 100 yard target small game load, a 200 yard target load for number three, and then a 600 yard or deer target um, 180, 200 grain bullet load number four. I'm thinking that the 125 grain plain base small game gallery bullets 900 to 1,000 feet per second is probably right in the realm that I'm thinking about with this setup. We're a little light at 118, and he's saying that the universal for that would be about five grains of bullseye to get around 900 to 1,000 feet per second. That sounds about right, so I think we're gonna go after that way. So right down here, it starts uh, talking about bullets for this gallery load. The small game or gallery load, 110 to 115 grain bullets intended for the 30 carbine and the 3220 Winchester, such as the Lyman 3118, etc. are not as accurate as heavier ones like the 291. There isn't a readily available 30 caliber cast small game bullet of the proper weight. So we'll just uh, compromise and go with this 118 grain and uh, go that way. So I did mock up one round, a test round, to see what it looked like in 7.65 Argentine. Camera that way. Bullet seats nicely. Looks like that length will be good. Uh, this is just a just a mock-up round. Let's make sure it'll chamber in the rifle okay. I'm pretty sure it will, but let's give it a try anyway. Yep, feels pretty good. So I think that's going to work out all right. So I figured to make this interesting, we'd uh, got traditional bullets. Thought it'd be fun to kind of load them traditionally and simply, and lube them traditionally and simply. And I've got everything I need right here in the box. So. Take a look at what I brought out to the picnic table in the backyard. So what I have here is a box that I often take to the range if I'm going to load at the range. Uh, sometimes I use a Lee hand press, sometimes I put other things in there, but right now I've got this pretty much set up with everything I need to load some 765 Argentine. I've got uh, a Lee loader over here in 765 Mauser. I've got a uh, Lee dipper kit wedged down in there. I've got a lube kit. I got a bottle of bullseye. I got a funnel. I got a hammer. I got everything I need here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do first. I think the first thing we need to do is to um, think about getting these bullets lubed up. So we'll use a Lee lube kit. This is actually uh, set up for 44 caliber or whatnot, but it's going to work fine 
for these uh, 314 diameter bullets, what I'll do is I'll just set them down in each of these holes and then uh, let it flow in around the bullets and lube them. And then I made a cutter to cut them out. I just took a piece of 765 Argentine brass and I uh, opened up the neck to a diameter that would fit nicely over the bullet, like so. Uh, and uh, I can cut the bullet out of the lube that way. So, and then this is just a, I drilled a hole through the bottom of the case so that I could eject the, the bullet out. I hope the camera view is okay. I'm having a hard time seeing the camera lens in the in the sun here. But uh, anyway, one of the things I picked up in an old video where where um, Richard Lee demonstrated using the Lee loader is that it's a really good idea to run your Lee loaders and things on a big steel plate like this. This is a piece of 1018 cold rolled, uh, 3 8 inch thick that I picked up at a you know local metal dealer. And then this is a piece of half inch heavy industrial felt. And that gives you a nice surface when you're using the Lee loader to, to, to tap on with the loader and it has some damping with the felt beneath it. And uh, it works really well. I suppose you could use a, a gong, a target gong or something like that would be a, a good choice. But uh, I figure it might work okay to do the lubing on too. So we'll grab a handful of bullets. I think I've got, how many pieces of brass do I have? 5, 10, 15, 20, I've got 20. Pieces. I don't know if I can fit 23 in here or not. One, two, three. Hope the view's okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's 23. Let's do a let's do an even 25. That way, if I mess one up, I have a spare. <laughs> and to melt this lube, I brought a little I brought a little butane torch out. I don't know if it's going to do the job. If it doesn't, I'll I'll go in and get a propane torch that has a bigger flame. But let's try this first and see if we can do this. And uh, this is something outdoors, just uh, kind of winging it. Let's see how it goes. A little worried that the heat might be a little too focused. And I think the level of this lube might be a little bit too low, but uh, I've got a little bit more in the tube, and that's why I left this area in the middle, is I figured that if uh, if this lube level is too low, I can add a little to the middle. And I brought out a, another pan of a different kind of lube that I can fill some in if I need to. This. It's melting it just fine. The heat's a little too focused, um, but it's working. We just basically got to get it to melt the lube around the bullets to get it into the lube groove. Just don't stay in any place too long. I don't need to melt bullets. I usually do this like on a hot plate, but I didn't want to run an electric cord and. I thought the little torch would be kind of cool because it fit in the it fit in the uh, box with the other tools where the propane torch wouldn't. The wind's kind of getting me a little bit here too. Yep, I think we're going to need more lube, so I'll uh, kind of work on that at the same time. down for a minute. Get this extra chunk of lube in there. That stuff is super sticky. I 
love the smell. It smells like crayons. And what I'll do is I'll just melt enough of this in there to fill the lube grooves up as high as I want them to go. And then uh, if I get enough before that big chunk in the middle is melted, I can just let it go. Neighbors are taking off with their boat. Nice day here today. It's probably, I don't know, 80-ish. Humidity's down. It's, it's been rather humid the last few days, but right now it's it's really nice outside. That's why I chose to film outdoors. I figured I wasn't going to make it to the range today because I was doing some other things. I spent some time making some parts and things, so they're coming back already. <laughs> they must have forgotten something. Yep, I see the lube starting to get up into the top groove, so I think we're going to be just about right. Get this all melted here. My table's not exactly level, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here. You know, I probably don't truly have to have all the top grooves probably really don't need lube, it's going to be really low velocity, but I'll, I'll tip the plate a little bit here to just get a little coating in those other grooves, and it'll, it'll pick up a little bit of messiness when I do the cake cutting anyway. Okay, good. Look at that. Okay, our lube is melted and going in the lube grooves, done with the torch, it can sit to the side. So I guess what we could do now is move this out of the way and let it set up, and we could move on to the next part. Um, Shouldn't take that too awful long to set up though. How hot is it? Oh, it's not hot at all. The steel plate didn't hardly even get any of the uh, heat. So. I think I can move that out of the way and then we'll have the plate to ourselves here. Okay, yep, we'll just let that set over there and then we'll move on. So what I got here is I got my, my cases and I said I did the, the sample one here. Now the, the thing is, is with the lead loader, when I size the cases, it's gonna be sized for a jacketed bullet that's roughly the, the correct size for the caliber, somewhere around 312 or so. So these 314 bullets, the lead loader will, uh, there's two problems. The lead loader is gonna make the neck too tight for them. And also when it's time to put the bullet down in the hole, the bullet, won't go through because it's 314 rather than the 312 that would be normal. So you know, we'll have to work around that. So like I say, I like I like to work on these uh, on the steel plate here. It gives you something nice to hammer on. But uh, what I came up with is I uh, I turned on my lathe the uh, tool, and this tool basically has the same proportions up on the front as a Lyman M die or one of the NOE expander tools. And we can use this to expand my case mouths to make them the right size for the uh, for the bullet. I just realized I brought out everything I needed to do this, but I didn't bring primers out, so I'll have to step away in a minute and go get primers because I didn't bring primers out. I thought I had everything, but I don't. So anyway, let's go ahead and size a case. And these were fired in this rifle, so they're a uh, fire form pit, so on the steel plate, this there you go, it's all hammered in. You can do this in space too, it works that way. You don't have to do it on the plate. And then if we knock it out with the knockout rod. Now we're sized. Now like you say, saying a minute ago, it's gonna be too tight for this fat bullet. So I came up with this tool and I made the length such that it, uh, this larger boss here too also won't pass through, just like the bullet won't, it's too big. But if I put this in the, in the die, and then put the die down onto the chamber. Okay, now I'm starting to expand. 
when you hear the noise change, you know you're probably enough. So then I can pop this out, and you can see that that case is right up to the step on the, I hope I can see in there. Yeah, it's right up to the step and the, uh, so I know that that's good and, good and case mouth expanded and flared. Now I can pop it out of there, and it's suitable for the bullet now. Yep, starts in there real nicely. So that's gonna, that's gonna be real good. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and size all these cases. I don't, I'll do a couple here on the film, and then I'll uh, wait for that. Uh, the lube is almost set up. So there's one sized. We'll eject it. Ooh, a little tighter. You can expand it. You can batch these to make the process a little smoother. You could size them all and then expand them all. And I've, I've seen people do it either way. I tend to, I kind of like to go one case at a time. Even if I'm priming them, I tend to, to do it that way. I'd prime them right now, except for I didn't bring the primers out. There's another one all set. There's that. See, I hope this is all showing up on that screen okay because I can't really see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. So that one's all set. The expander ready. Oops, I got a little over anxious with that one. <laughs> That's not a problem, we can fix that. It's real simple. Since I over flared it a little bit, I can just put it right back in there. I a lot of times just do this right in my hand rather than on the plate. It just it just works a little better. But I haven't quite gotten the feel for the uh, expander tool yet. It uh, you can hear the sound change when it uh, hits that second shoulder. But I've thought about threading this shaft up here at the top, and then I could screw it so it has a stop. But then it would make it a nuisance to get it in and out of the out of the tool. Okay, so there it's starting the bottom. I think that's it right there. I can feel it. Yep. I don't know. That's not quite enough. So you, you don't probably have to even put this in the tool. I just like it because it's a nice guide, but I can, if I do it this way, I can see when it gets right to the case mouth there and it's expanded enough to do the job. There we go. Let's do another. to stick on the mandrel too. That one was a little tighter. Make sure that I got it enough that the bullet will go in. Oh yeah, looks good. Perfect. I like how that works. Let's do one more and then I'll uh, shut the camera off for a minute. And I'll go in and get the primers. What I'll probably do is uh, size the rest of these with the camera turned off so that everyone doesn't have to get totally bored with me sizing cases. I gotta put this in there first. Perfect. Okay, good. I'll uh, run in and get some primers. I'll uh, finish sizing and flaring these cases, and then we'll work on the bullets. It looks like the lube's just about set up, so the timing is perfect. All right, they're all sized. Just for good measure, we'll go ahead and hit them with a the case trimmer. I think these are all going to be too short already, but we'll take a peek at it. If I check a couple of them and they seem to be short, we'll just let it be. Yep, no need for trim there. 
I don't think they're going to need to be trimmed. Let's take another random one over here. Nope, no need for trimming. Very good. So we'll just... These have really clean primer pockets already, so we don't have to do anything with that. We'll just give them a real quick kit with the chamfer tool. It only takes a minute. They probably don't really need this either. Just a little bit to seat that oversized cast bullet so the inside is pretty smooth. I think they'll seat without shaving any lead. Okay, that's done. So now it's everybody's favorite part of the Lee loader. We get to hammer the primers in. Everybody's favorite part. Since we're doing vintage everything, we've got Winchester vintage primers too. There's 20 of them there. I'll put them in that and they won't get away. Priming rod. Now sometimes I prime up with it in this uh, thing here to guide it, but I, I don't typically find it necessary. I just set it on there like this. Put the priming rod in there. It works fine. I have set them off before. It's happened. Um, the key thing is to I think when you're most likely to do it is when you do what I just did there where you're not sure if it's in all the way so then you take it off of there and you don't get it centered up. I think that's where it's a good idea to use this chamber to, um, you know, if you, if you do this all in Lee's order, you prime it with it in this chamber still and, you know, you knock it out into this and then that keeps things centered up because this is captured in a little shoulder in there. So if, if you're still in the sizing part of it, you can do that but because I didn't have my primers out here and I had to expand it I can't tap it up in there far enough to make that work so we'll just wing it but uh, that primer feels fine it's just a little bit below flush I'll try to be a little bit cooler with this one like a lot of things with the Lee loader if you do it on this steel plate you can hear when it bottoms that's good. It's funny, you watch that old video of, of Richard himself doing it, and he like seats the primer with one whack. He's like, bam! <laughs> I don't quite have the confidence to do that. Hey, we got a, got a little tiny little ant there on my plate. Get away. So I'll, uh, I kind of take it a little easier. This is a real lightweight plastic mallet. There's not much to it, so I just kind of take it easy and take my time. I'm excited to see what this footage looks like filming in the backyard like this. You know, I, I can't see the screen on the... I'm using a video camera today, and I can't really see the screen on it because of the contrast in the light. So it's hard to tell. I think I've got a pretty good view of what I'm doing there. I can see my hands a little bit in there. But if it's really bad, I'll edit it out. I don't know that I could run this end to end if anybody would watch the whole thing. <laughs> but this is uh, this is the kind of stuff I do. I like to fool around with this this old stuff, I certainly don't load all my ammo this way, but I, I do like to fool around with it now and then. It's it's a lot of fun to, to do these different things. It's nice weather out here. Sun's out. Birds are chirping. Everybody else in the neighborhood is mowing their lawn, and 
I'm loading 765 Argentine on the picnic table. So that's what I do. I said 20, that was only 10 primers that I poured out. I know you guys were all counting as you watched. Yep, you can hear the difference there, that one's definitely seated. Now this brass is converted 30 out 6 brass. I don't remember what head stamp. Uh, this is uh, some of it's WRA, some of it's RA. It's uh, mixed. <laughs> and our primer debacle continues. I only brought 20 primers. Well, that's okay. I probably won't load all 23 rounds on on the camera anyway. This is a little redundant. So I think that's where you get into trouble. I'm not convinced that I had that all the way, and then you got to get that back in there and center it up just right. I can feel it there. But I think that's where you could probably set one of those off pretty easily. Let's see here. Yep, I'll be, uh, I'll be three primers short. There was only 20 in that old sleeve of Winchester stainless primers. There's something enjoyable about this. It's just kind of, it's kind of crude. I remember, geez, 35 years ago I'd see the Lee loaders in the magazines or the catalogs and I'd laugh at it, you know, because my dad had RCBS stuff for the most part. You look at the, the Lee loader and it's so funny. But now I've got a large collection of them, I enjoy playing with them. I'll be a couple short, but we won't worry about that. We'll just do what we have. That felt good. Hey, look at that. One more and we'll have even 20. And then I'll have three left over for later, I guess. Or two left over for later. All right. Ooh, that one went in. Primer pocket was not quite as tight as the others. There. 20 pieces of prime brass, ready to go. Resized. Expanded ready for powder charge and I think that's what we'll do next we'll go ahead and do powder charges I brought out a bottle of bullseye and I've already checked to make sure that the chart was correct on the old this is a one of the vintage sets of Lee dippers it's the red ones I have the red ones I have the black ones I have the yellow ones but on this one if I look on the little slide rule for bullseye Green dot, red dot, bullseye. The point, the 039 measure should give us six grains, and I checked that in the house, and it did. So that's what we're gonna run. I think six grains is gonna work well. So, stealing an idea from my friend Mark Johnson, I'm gonna use the 22 sleeve for my powder. Mark showed me that this was a good way to do Lee Dippers a few years back. And he kind of chuckles every time he sees me do it. So I give him credit. All right, so here's our first one now. Normally when you do this with a Lee loader, you know, you would do the charge with it in here. You can pour the, the powder right in the mouth and it'll go in there. And, and these will accept the funnel too, which is kind of nice. So you can, can do it that way um, since uh, we're already out of the die. We may as well just use the funnel and do it the normal way. So I'll just uh, I'll just charge them the normal way. Get a little scoop there. Now, now this is this is you know just gallery load plinkers. This is not critical at all. 
I think the key thing is only put in one. We're not gonna get we're not gonna get too crazy about this. We're just gonna dip them. This is supposed to be fun. If I wanted to sweat the details, I'd go downstairs and do something with a micrometer on it. This is this is meant to be relaxing and fun on a nice day outside with bullets that were sent to me by Mike Treen. Dip in my powder like my friend Mark Johnson does. I charged that one. No micrometers. No digital calipers. No scales. No carbide dies. That one looked a little light. No trickler either. We're just we're just scooping them right in. Man, this is, this is a lot more fun than staring at the scale and trickling and sweating the tenth of a grain. That one's a little light, but we're just not going to worry about it. Remember, a long time ago, Johnny's Reloading Bench did a video kind of like this. He was sitting on the ground in his, ooh, maple seed just got me. He's sitting on the ground in his backyard loading uh, 762 Russian with his Lee loader and uh, it was pretty good. He's, I was cringing that Lee was hammering on his Lee loader on top of a cinder block and I was like, oh, he's gonna, gonna chew up the end of it. <laughs> all right, so we have all of our powder charges done. We'll put the bullseye back in the can later. Because I'm excited to see how the uh, cake cutter works that I made out of the old piece of brass. It was an old piece of Burdan Prime surplus brass, and I just uh, sharpened it up a bit. I, I uh, expanded it out so it would be big enough for the bullet. All right, so let's check this out. Oh, yeah, those are set up real nice. No resizing of these lead bullets. Like I said, these were cast by Mike Treen, they're Lyman 3118. They were uh, about uh, 118 grains, they about 314 in diameter. I just lubed them in this uh, beeswax and alox from an old Lee kit, and then we're just gonna kick, cut them out of there. There's the first one, and I made this, this is an old Lee decapping pin um, that the pin broke off, and uh, it was just right to fit through the hole that I drilled in the case here. I've been repairing these. I. A lot of times I can get the music wire piece out of them. You know, the old style ones that had the hardened wire in there. So you can, if you can get a hold of that wire, you can pull it out. And if not, I've just been turning enough on the end of this to get a hold of it with the pliers and yank it out. And then I can seat a new piece of wire in there and, and put them back in service. So I've been repairing broken lead decapping rods. So let's see how this works. If that pushes out of there, okay. Oh yeah. There we go. First loop bullet. Look at that, Mike Treen. That is really nice. I think this old rifle is gonna like these bullets. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to pan lube a ton of bullets like this and cut them out of the cake like this. It's kind of a very manual process, but it seemed appropriate for loading them with the Lee loader. Push out easy. It's pretty awesome. It's nice when an idea works. Sometimes you try things like this and it just, it's a dud. But this time, everything seemed to come out okay. Boy, that breeze feels good. Nice, cool breeze. 
Yeah, Mike's bullets are, boy, they're nice. Um, I don't know if he just happened to have the mold or if he actually has a 3220 or if he was running these in 300 Savage for plinking loads or something. I don't know. That's cutting out nicely. I hope the video's turning out good. I said I can't see it in the screen. I'm kind of winging it here. This is a format I haven't tried before. So. I don't know how good the footage is. It'll either be good or it won't. Cutting out of the loop very well. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's uh, it's cutting out of the loop cake extremely well. My ejector pin is working good. The uh, tipping that pan and splashing just a little bit up into that top groove seemed to work pretty good. Yeah, this whole. Old crude stuff is just fun. Remember, I don't know, a couple years ago when Full Lead Taco had the giveaway with the ta Taco Apocalypse where you had to do your casting and loading with no power or anything. There were some pretty neat ideas in that. One more to cut out. There we go. Hold that up to the camera for good measure just in case you guys can't see. Those are cutting out of there. I'm lucky I haven't started sneezing. There's a fair amount of stuff blowing around in the air. I've got safety glasses on so that kind of blocks my eyes a little bit. I've found that when this stuff is floating around in the air, if I keep my if I keep my hands away from my eyes, I usually do okay. As soon as I start rubbing my eyes or anything, that's when I get in trouble with cotton wood or something like that. It's, it'll get me if I'm, if I'm not uh, careful about that. Okay, good. All right, so we're all set there. We got our bullets cut out. We got our powder charges thrown. I'm gonna look in those cases in the light just to make sure it looks pretty good. I was pretty careful with it, so I'm pretty sure we're all set with that. Okay, good. All right, so now we can seat some bullets. So we got the old bullet seater out. And I've already set this up. Now, this is one thing that's really cool with a Lee loader, is if you keep a test round or a factory round, if you're gonna use a jacketed bullet that's close to a factory round, the easiest way to set the bullet seating depth is to put one in there that is what you want. And uh, set everything all up, and then you know make your adjustments. Like I said, I already adjusted this for that uh, for this bullet because I made that test round, and that's how I got the seating depth. So the you, know, you adjust the seating depth by turning this part of the of the lee loader up, and then this is a lock ring. But this is already set, so we're all we're good to go. And then of course this is what we tap it in with. So well, like I said before, normally what I do is I I charge the case and everything all standing up here and I normally drop the bullet in the top, but these 314 bullets will not go down this lee loader, so we're gonna have to just do it this way. We'll start the bullet by hand, and uh, that looks pretty good. We're, we're uh, looking pretty good there, I think. Um, I hope you guys can see that all right. A little bit, of, a little bit of lube squirting out, but that doesn't bother me any. Make sure that's all lined up. All right, dude, that's looking good. We got a little bit of the, the lube squirted out, but we'll wipe those up. You know, I'll just do it with my finger here for now. And uh, those have enough neck tension, and uh, this is a bolt action gun. I'm not gonna worry about crimping them or anything. I'll just, uh, I'll just leave that just how it is probably and go ahead and run it. But there's one done. 
Let's do another. Yep, there you go. You hear that noise? That means it's it's hit. Oh yeah. I think we probably could seat that a little bit further, but I don't I don't think it's necessary. I'll just let it go to there. No need to get too worked up about it. We'll just run them as they are. there I can see my hand in the camera so I think I'm doing all right I'll move that up a little bit just in case the views better up there Get a little bit of Sun I'll see the bullet in it that works put that on there put that on there there's the hammer all right a little bit of beeswax and alox there to wipe off that I brought out, I didn't bring a rag. Looking good. Well, I have to say thanks again to Mike Treen for sending these bullets. I think they're going to be a lot of fun in this old carbine. And we'll see if the larger diameter helps. And he like I said, I shot 313s in it. Four. These are 314, and maybe that'll help. These are going to be really slow. They'll certainly be subsonic based on the case volume in this very light charge of bullseye. I've done very similar in uh, 3030, making plinking loads. The real light charge of bullseye. I thought about doing this with Trail Boss, but I wasn't real sure about the powder charge. And I thought it'd be fun to stick with that old Harris article about the military cartridges and the gallery loads. Although I am a little bit warmer than what he recommended for the for the gallery load. But then again, he was using a little bit heavier bullet. So with this lighter bullet, we'll see what happens. I don't know if I'll chrono him. Or if it'll just be a shoot them and see if they hit the target, see if they group. There's the first 10. I guess we've gone this far. May as well do the last 10. But I'm pretty happy with how the expander tool worked. We uh, managed to get a nice case expansion on those pieces of brass for that big bullet. It's, uh, at first I thought, well, you know, I can bring the Lee hand press out and do it with a Lee collet neck sizing die. And then expand it back up with a NOE expander or something. But I thought, you know, it'd be more fun to, to do it this crude way. I know that a couple of the other guys are interested in the Argentine Mausers, the engineer carbines and whatnot, so, so maybe give some of you some ideas. And I think this little bullet is going to work pretty good. It's a little, a little sticky with that wax on there. I'm going to have to clean the inside of the Lee loader out to do that. 
You have to change the process just a little to do the cast bullet, especially the oversized cast bullet, but it still works. I thought about resizing the bullets to 314 for the push through die, but I decided I would just leave them as Mike cast them. Once again, I'm stunned how pretty these bullets are. Mike does a nice job with his casting. So if, if Mike Tree never offers you bullets, say yes. Alright, we're down to the last three, at least that I have set. I'll uh, have to get three more primers. I'll throw three more powder charges. Last one. I found that 23rd piece of brass laying in the in the uh, lube box there. I don't know if that one. I don't know if that one got expanded size. Looks like it was sized. I don't know if it was expanded or not though. Oh yeah, it was expanded. So if I bring out three more primers. I can finish up the stuff, but uh, I think you guys have probably seen enough. But once again, Lee Loader, my own expander that I made. Um, take a look at that old uh, video where uh, Richard Lee's demonstrating the Lee Loader on the steel plate. He makes a round in less than a minute. I believe it's a 30-06 that he's loading, and he's just hammering away, and it's it's very enjoyable, and he's narrating it as he goes. Um, I'll try to find a link to that video because I've watched it a few times. I should be able to find it. But uh, once again, these are going to go in this... Uh, Argentine uh, engineer's carbine so we'll get it out to the range and try these and uh, once again thank you very much to Mike Treen for the great bullets I'm sorry it took me so long to make a video with them thanks to Mark Johnson for the great ideas on the, the powder scooping and the plinking loads Mark's been doing these plinking load type things forever and uh, it's a lot of fun so thanks for watching everybody